Hey, I'm Patrick. I'm originally from Austria. I uh, live in Mexico. I'm the co-owner of Project Advanced Training Facilities in Playa del Carmen and Tulum. And uh, yeah, I've been cave diving basically, uh, or cave diving has been my number one activity for the past eight years. And I'm here with X Deep in Düsseldorf on a trade show to present our new uh, Cybon equipment. The start of the stealth, well, is actually quite some time ago because I became a Cybon instructor in 2007 and there was no readily available equipment. So when clients would come and go like, hey, I want to do a Cybon course, I was like, so what equipment do you have? And we had to, so I really literally designed and created an incredible amount of Cybon equipment, always specific for the people that were, that were coming to do the course. Uh, with Piotr, I met the first time three or four years ago, I think, in the summer when I was uh, cave diving in France. And he contacted me and said, hey, I have this x company, I want to do Cybon equipment. Uh, we want to have your expertise for it. I want to come and meet you. And so he came to France to see me. And we started with the same, with the first designs of it and, and has been going good ever since. So we have the traditional system, or the, now we call it the classic setup. Because what is very important for us, that people understand that this is not three systems. It is one system with three different wing options. So it is one harness. The harness is already very flexible because I have different size of weight pockets that can be put. Uh, the main weight pocket, there's three sizes. We have the medium with four times two kilos. We have double that size, so four times four kilos. And then I have trim pockets that I can uh, put on the side as well. And we have a smaller weight pocket from warm water with only two slots. Then we have the classic setup wing, which is a 16 liters uh, uh, wing that is removable, which is one of the points for cave diving. If we pass really small restrictions, we have the possibility to remove the wing and pass the restriction without it. And I think one of our signature things is the dump valve at the very bottom that is reachable with either your left or your right hand, uh, which also is a, is a cave diving related uh, decision that we made. Afterwards, we have a, a Facebook group with like about 2,700 members. And when me and Piotr look at the pictures, it's diving in Italy, diving in, in, in Alaska, uh, in, in Siberia, in, in Thailand, the Maldives, and nobody seems to go cave diving. So yeah. we asked them, um, how many of you actually go to do, do cave? Yeah. And it was a very, very small part, about 82% of <laughs> Of all the people do open, water. do open water diving, exactly. So we thought if we made something specific for cave diving, we should also do something very specific for those 82% of people that actually don't do cave diving. So we asked them, if you could change something about our setup, what would that be? And then most of them said, you know, a wing that is permanently connected to the harness would be a great, uh, solution. A great solution. Easy so to wear on the boat, easy to, the yes. Exactly. So, we made the first designs on paper on a Dima show before last Dima show, okay, so more so than a year ago, ago. And, and have been trying to do that ever since. And the, the main issue why it takes some time for us to develop is because we don't design our equipment on a computer. Yeah, you but, tried. And we you tried. tried it. And, and Piotr is in Poland and I'm in Mexico. <laughs> So Piotr has to make a prototype, test it with uh, locals like Hochor, uh, and then when they go like, yeah, we think it's good, they send me to Mexico, and then I test it. And you know, finding the time with all the projects yeah. that you're teaching to, to jump in the wall and to test it, and then I give him my go feedback. And back, go and back, exactly. That's the top of the step, so the second one. So we have two setups that are permanently connected. The tech setup with currently 18 liters, and the rec setup with currently 13 liters. And they are literally both very this, the identical, the same, just the difference is the amount of lift they have. So what do I have to do to put that wing on the, on the harness that I already have? I need to unthread the shoulder straps yeah. and pass them through the triglides that are permanently sewn into the wing. Okay. Then here in the middle, I have a Velcro uh, latch that basically just wraps around the weight yes. pocket. So, even if you inflate it all the way, it's never going to come to the point that the wing separates from the diver. It's yeah. always going to stay close together with the diver. And streamlining was really one of the, the, the things that we were very, very focused on. Then here on the bottom, you have to shoot, I can come in a bit closer. Here at the bottom on the crotch strap, we have a metal plate where the bottom of the wing is attached to. Okay, so it's the same that you use with this to Exactly, it's the, same, it's the same metal plate that, that our users are already familiar with. 
And what is important when I do the adjustment, I want to have some tension here. Yeah. So that the, the wing keeps its nice shape. This is so reinforced. Exactly, this is reinforced. So this part always stays in place. Very good. Just the bottom part. If I have it too high up, it's going to bulk up a little bit. Which is not changing nothing about the usability. It still works perfect. Because when we ask the people, where do you think is the best place to have done bulk? 95% Absolutely. said we prefer absolutely. to have it on the bottom is the best place. It's so fast and well positioned, absolutely. So, so we want you to don't do have to untrim, uh, yeah. to move. Absolutely. Exactly. And, and anyways, in the cave diving a lot, when you're with the line, I have a free hand, or with a scooter, it's definitely preferable. Up here, we have some slots okay. where either the continuous bungee or the bungee loops come yeah. through to keep the tanks. And this also keeps the wing very, very, very close to the diver's back. So here in the front, to have it truly permanently connected without that I need to open or close anything, we have those tri-glides here. So no bungee in front. No bungee in front with the triangle and this is clipped into. The only reason why this is clipped is to have an easy access to the weight pocket. But once I put the weight in and I clip this, I can leave it yeah. and have it constantly together like that. And the only thing I need to open and close is the weight buckle and clip in the power inflator. And other than that, it's like a recreational BCD or, or a backpack or, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Of course, there is a faster version. Uh, you know, I'm traveling a lot and I don't always have the time then to put the triangle and to put the plate on the crotch strap. So you can keep a very similar system from the classic to have at the bottom just a bungee loop. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the clip here with a longer bungee from here and you just pass the bungee through so the bungee. You keep it and here and then the other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then the only thing I need to change is the shoulder straps, which takes like two minutes, three minutes. Okay. Now you can manage the, the moving o-ring. Yes, because the only thing, I mean, this is a mannequin. It's, ah, okay. it's very skinny. Usually you would have this more in, in the, the middle. Okay, more in the more middle. More like that. Okay. And then I have all that space here to move okay. the sliding D-rings to the front and to the back. So the same system applies. So, and this is the recreational version, basically just a smaller wing. And, and we also have here the, the droppable weight pockets. Personally, I don't think it's a great solution. I imagine. I imagine. But, uh, but you know, some uh, uh, recreational diving federations have it in the standards to have droppable weight. So we have this as an option for people as well. So it's not compulsory for the certification, for the CE certification. No. You can remove it. Yes. Okay. okay. So the solution is absolutely the same. So, so exactly the same. Bungee, the two, the, the, here. the rec setup and the tech setup is exactly, exactly the, the same, same. just good. different volume. So you can buy. You can buy the wing later and pass separate. To the one exactly. To the other one. So if, for people that already have the classic and say, you know, if I go to Florida, I'm gonna dive big yeah. steel tank. I want to have, you know, the tech set up with the 18 liters uh, that is permanently connected. You can do that. Or for people that go like, if I go to Maldives or Egypt yeah. and live aboard, and I want to be fast and quick. You can have the the rack set up. And have you ever think about doing a, a wing? That the original still too, but smaller. For example, for women. For yes, that, uh, because also there's some very famous cave diving uh, women that have asked us, and we might do something in the future. But the reality is, the amount of people it's so small is so that it, yeah, that it's I difficult imagine. for us to produce something and make the machines to make it. Yeah. But for them, for example, the recreational version might be a solution as well. Yeah, cool. yes. And with 13 liters, is still is still a lot. Yeah, absolutely. You started doing the Stealth 2.0. Now is the time of the Sign Mount 2.0 here. We, we hope. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so Sign Mount, we already have the answer. So it's not just for okay. Yes. Steve and Patrick say no. But how about recreational, the real recreational diamond, starting with Saint Mount and the use of Saint Mount as an alternative to, to back mounting recreational experience? Let's let's split that up yeah. in two questions. Do I think that side mounting has a place in recreational diving? Absolutely. Uh, when I come to Europe, to the, I, mean, the, I would say the number one course I teach in Europe at the moment is open water sideman diving in lakes. Yeah. Now, the way that I remember diving in the lake was put on very thick undergarments, yeah. put on the dry suit, put on a 10 kilo weight belt, put on 15 liter steel tank, sweat like there's no tomorrow Before entering the water <laughs> go in the water and then be cold and feel my back hurt after yeah. from the weight belt and from the heavy weight now dressed like this i have two 10 liter steel tanks very small i put my regulators i go to the lake i put them in the water 
I go back, I put my dry suit, I put my stealth with six kilo, and I have it as a backpack, not as a weight belt. I can still speak to people, I'm not sweating at all. I go in the water, I knee down, left tank, right tank, and I go dive. And as the cylinders are so close to my body, it's as close of a feeling of free diving yeah. as I can have wearing you know, conventional so trim scuba. And trim is easier. Trim is easy, the, the, I can swim. I don't have a 15 meter yeah. heavy tank on my back, but yet I have two cylinders, 10 liter and 10 liter, which is 20 liter, which is five liters even more. Then in, you, in Austria, we dive in cold water. So most people have a Y valve or an H valve. Yeah. And many times I ask people, so if you're regulated free flow because of cold water, can you reach the valve to close? With, with a single tank, it's That's very really difficult. difficult. That's a difficult. Do you think your dive partner could swim over? To, maybe not. You know, the way we dive in lakes, maybe not. So now, besides having the comfort, you also have true you know, redundancy because the cylinders are separate. So if you have a free flow, I can say, I don't care, I'm gonna come to the surface with the other one. Or because it's in a place where it's very easy to be reached, I can also close and stop the free flow. So I, I really think that it definitely has a place in recreation diving. What maybe has to change is a little bit the training that is offered. Yes, absolutely. But this is a brand new sport, which means also the instructors need still some time to gain experience. So I think we need to give everybody some time and, and not be so hard on people. And we need to understand that many instructors want to offer it now because it's a new boom, everybody needs to make some money. But, uh, but yeah, I think it's going to take some time for recreational agencies to develop uh, good courses, good material, uh, uh, good skills for the student and then uh, have instructors that teach and teach and teach, get more experience and then become better instructors. So I really liked that when he said, you know, it's time for Cybon 2.0 and I, I think we're heading towards that direction. The other question you asked me was, could there be an open water course taught directly, directly in Cybon? Can there? Yeah, for sure. But with very good instructor. Yeah, the instructor needs to have a lot. And, and, and let's not forget, for somebody that has never dived before, that yeah. don't know how seconds, they don't know how a hose works, maybe putting it on the back, it's gonna be that. I don't know, it's hard to say. I have not been teaching an open water course in like yeah. eight or nine years, so I, I don't know how much uh, the people are able to, to learn new activities at the beginning. Specifically then, if you would talk about two tanks, I would yeah, say maybe yes. recreational, maybe with one tank, maybe, maybe in wet one. suit, yeah. maybe in, you know, it's, it's hard to say, it's, it's, it's really hard to say. But I think like generally, if I would imagine, if a friend of the family would ask me, I would most likely tell them, go with a single Start tank. Like, yeah, because you have a lot of things to think about besides. Yeah, 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 maybe and, and too, equi too much equipment. But then again, I'm lacking the experience Absolutely. of teaching open water so courses. So we got to build up this experience yeah. in the instructor base and then maybe we can... Exactly, this. and also try it out, you know, try to teach an open water course in Cybermount and yeah. see if the people learn it fast and easy. Absolutely. And if you see it's not fast and easy, then you can still change the way you teach it. And if it's still not fast and easy, well, then maybe it's better to start with tank on the back. Maybe find some little solution, some little change exactly. about the teaching method. Exactly. And, and then, or when they say it's not easy, well then maybe single tank, yeah. 10, 15 dives, or maybe then, then it's part of the advanced course yeah. they could then change yeah, yeah. over and do something. Very good. Let's say thank you from the reader of and the user of Serial Diver to Patrick Whitman. My pleasure. Thank you so much.